Uh, my name is Jaden Ladbrook. I'm a mineral process engineer in training here at Hatch. We are an EPCM company, so engineering, procurement, construction, and project management. Um, I work more so on the engineering side uh, with our mineral processing group. Um, my group specifically, we do a lot of work with the mining industry, um, and we mostly do a lot of um, modeling, sim uh, process simulation, um, calculations and um, reports, research, uh, kind of a wide variety of different things. And then, yeah, between all of the other disciplines and then the different groups within our work, we kind of cover just a wide variety of different, different industries and different projects. And there's just all sorts of different work that's going on within the company. As a mineral processing uh, engineer, our, our mineral processing group, we do a lot of modeling, simulations, calculations. So I guess just from like a project standpoint, there's a lot of, there's different um, levels of the projects, uh, FEL1 through FEL4. And so some of the earlier projects will be more of like conceptual stuff. So a client might come to us and say that they need to, uh, they wanna know if a project is even gonna be feasible. So they'll ask us um, to just kind of do some of the preliminary work and look at, um, you know, if they purchased all the equipment and if they were operating it and they were wanting to produce this much per year, what would that actually look like? Would they make money? Would they not? Um, would there be any sort of environmental setbacks? Would there be, you know, just all of these different aspects that we have to take into consideration. And so my group specifically, we will take whatever data they have on the ore that they are collecting or um, just kind of the raw materials and put it through simulations to say like, oh, you know, for this process, you're going to need this many pumps, you're going to need to do these kinds of processes, you're going to need to screen it and kind of provide all of that data to them. And that helps determine then the other disciplines, what they need to do. Like, uh, so mechanical will then be able to determine um, the size of the equipment that they'll need. And then that'll then tell electrical what they need to do. And so we're kind of, my group specifically, we're more at like the front end of a lot of those projects. And my typical work day, um, it really varies between projects. Some of them, uh, I might be doing some modeling or simulation. So entering data into the programs that we use and then just kind of seeing what it spits out and then providing basically like a stream table that just summarizes all of the important data from that model. On other projects, I might be writing a report. Certain ones I might be putting together a, a document that kind of outlines all of the um, main criteria that we need for it's a process design criteria process design basis um, which is a big one that our group it's like kind of a main deliverable for most of our projects and it's basically just outlining either all of the data that the client has provided to us or all of the assumptions that we've made throughout the throughout the project just to kind of give a general summary of what all went into it what assumptions were made so that if anything has changed in the future we know exactly what needs to change and why. So my career journey, uh, I think in high school, I was really good at math. I really liked science. I had a really great, I had a few really great um, science teachers like chemistry and biology. And I realized that I did really like chemistry. I then decided that I wanted to try out engineering. I think prior to that, I'd also done a couple, a couple of those online surveys where you can determine like what your most suited for and engineering came up a couple times. So I went into engineering first year, took a few chemistry classes, um, really enjoyed those and kind of continued on with them. And then, um, yeah, decided to do chemical engineering in school. I did a 16 month internship between my third and fourth year um, out at a potash mine just outside of Saskatoon here. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. I didn't know anything about potash prior to that. I didn't really know a whole lot about the mining industry really at all. Um, so that really piqued my interest. And then after school, I worked at a different company for about a year doing uh, as a junior project manager. And although that role was, I think it was still beneficial to me. It wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do in the long term. I wasn't really doing any chemistry or um, any of the things that I really enjoyed in school, but it did kind of give me a taste for what the industry after school was like. 
Um, and then this position at Hatch opened up and I applied for it and I got the position and been working here for um, a year and a half, almost two years now. And I've been really enjoying it. I get to work on all sorts of different types of projects, work with different commodities, so like potash, gold, copper, whatever, whatever the project may be that comes up. I've been really enjoying kind of that variability between projects and the variability between like the different roles that I have within a project too. It's been, it's been really good so far. I think for engineering, you just have to be driven. A lot of people think that you need to be smart. You need to be, you know, you need to be top of the class. But a lot of times, even just talking to people around the office, people that I've met in university, a lot of times they weren't the top of the class. You know, there are the odd people, the odd person who was, but a lot of times it's just having that determination to actually, you know, push yourself and study hard because yeah, first, the first few years of uh, university for engineering are quite difficult. They can be a little bit taxing, but I think as long as you have that drive and determination and you start to build that support system for studying and having people to ask questions to, um, it's it's a huge help. You'll you can do whichever discipline, whatever classes, you can do perfectly fine in them, and then in the like actually being out in the industry. Um, yeah, still relying on a lot of that technical uh, background from school, but also, um, yeah, not being afraid to ask questions, having determination to really push your career and do what you wanna do, whatever industries you're interested in. There is definitely a lot of teamwork and collaboration. Yeah, you definitely need to be able to do that. There, There's definitely the odd project that comes along where you know you can do work on your own, but even still, you need to be able to ask those questions to the people who have the information. And so being able to work effectively with other people, uh, work in a group is really, really important because yeah, that's how you build those support systems and you're able to ask questions to those people and get the support that you need on certain projects. And even just for career management in general, not just project work, but also having people around you to kind of advocate for you when you want to move forward or work on something else, or if you want to pursue something else in your career, having those people around to help you out with that is really, uh, really good. I absolutely love my job right now. You know, I hear a lot of people, even people who I graduated with, who they don't really like their job or they don't really like the projects that they're working on or they haven't found what their passion is yet. I think I really found that with this position. Um, I said for a while that I wanted to find a position where I had, I had the opportunities to work on different, work with different commodities. So potash, uranium, uh, copper, you know, kind of just see what those different processes were like. And then also having different variability with, um, you know, maybe the people that I'm working with or the types of things that I might be doing within a project. And the role that I'm in right now, I, I definitely get all of that. I get to work on all sorts of different types of projects. I take on different roles within those projects. And honestly, every day, I'm doing something different. So, you know, I'm not getting bored with like the monotony of doing the same tasks day in, day out. It's uh, kind of something different every day and it keeps me engaged and keeps me, keeps everything really interesting. And I, I really enjoy that a lot. And plus, even though it is chemical engineering or process engineering, it's the mineral processing group. So as a kid, I really liked rocks and I still do. And so being a mineral process engineer, like when I do have the opportunities to go to site, I get to see like all of the rocks and the ore and everything. And it's like being a little kid at a candy shop. It's, uh, it's pretty fun. <laughs> I would say the industry um, for chemical engineering or process engineering in general, there's always going to be positions around. Saskatchewan, we have uh, an abundance of potash. So the jobs around there, like even though they're not always hiring, there's always going to be work within those, uh, within that industry, whether it's from the client side or consulting or even just um, construction or project management. But yeah, so all of those places would need chemical engineers and then, you know, all of the other uh, types of mining that we have within the province, there's definitely um, a lot of work there. 
but even around Saskatoon, like we have a few um, a few distilleries around here as well, and those kinds of processes also need chemical engineers or process engineers. You know, we've got uh, a pretty large uh, lab laboratory presence here at SRC, so I know that there's quite a few people who I graduated with who are now working there. So we there's definitely a lot of industry and a lot of different opportunities for students to get into chemical engineering. It's a funny question to ask like what an engineer does because even people who work as an engineer, they can only tell you what they do. It's really difficult to know what other disciplines do or um, even, you know, whether on the client side, consultant side, or you know, even engineers who work for vendors and they supply pumps or other pieces of equipment. We kind of all have different things that we do. And even discipline to discipline, like uh, I couldn't really tell you what a civil engineer does except that they might design concrete pads and buildings. <laughs> yeah, everybody kind of has a different role and it's it's all project dependent, it's company dependent, it's it's also dependent on yourself too because if you want to take on a larger role within a project, you know, you can some people might take on more of a technical role where they're doing a lot of the design work and the background calculations and doing everything from that side or if they're on site, they might be uh, just as an example, uh, when I worked at a potash mine, a lot of times what I would do is go out into the mill and collect samples. And we would then use those samples to determine if the mill was running as it was supposed to. And then if it wasn't, then try to troubleshoot and figure out, well, why isn't it? What are some things that we could change in order to make sure that we are running appropriately? Because if you're not getting the proper recovery of product, then that's just money down the drain for the company. And then, you know, equipment might not be operating correctly. And so it's just a lot of a lot of troubleshooting when you're on site for the consultant side of things. You know, sometimes we can help out with some of that troubleshooting. We might be helping out with some of the design or providing uh, pricing or sizing for equipment. It's kind of a very broad spectrum of different different roles, different responsibilities, but kind of in the general realm of designing, optimization, and management, it's kind of all in that area. <laughs> if somebody was thinking about going into engineering, I think some advice that I would give to them is just to work hard, have some drive, some determination, um, and you know, going in, going through the schooling process is one of the harder steps because you know they do want to make sure that you have the technical skills and the technical background to actually make it uh, in your career. So they push you pretty hard in school. So it's important to remember that it it does get easier after that once you're in the once you're in the job industry because you're not going to be doing those crazy long, you know, three line long like equations. You're not going to be trying to solve those because a lot of times in the industry, if there's anything that's going on that requires those big long calculations, it's already built into a program. You just have to input the information, but you have to have the background understanding of where those calculations come from. So after school ends, it does get a bit easier, but having that determination to get through that and then still maintaining that determination throughout your, your work life as well, because you know, that's how you, you know, you, you're troubleshooting, you're optimizing processes, you're designing things. So um, you still want to make sure that you're putting your best foot forward. If I was to give advice to a high school student, I would say figure out what your passion is first. Because um, a lot of times, I know even some people who I went to high school with, they just went to university just for the sake of going to university, but didn't really know what they wanted to do. And there's nothing wrong with that either. I think if you're going to get the experience and try to figure out what you wanna do, for sure, that makes a lot of sense. But trying to figure out what your passions are uh, is really important in making sure that your career is actually fulfilling to you. Because I was always pretty good at math and I really enjoyed science. Uh, I really enjoyed chemistry, geology, all of that. And so I ended up finding a career path that perfectly matched that for me. And it's not just that 
I like what I do, it's that I'm genuinely passionate about the work that I'm doing and so it makes the days feel a lot, uh, it doesn't feel like work. You know, if you do what you love, you're really never going to work a day in your life because it doesn't feel like work anymore.